Good day, future RMTs. In this video, what we're going to discuss is all about nematodes. <clears throat> Our learning objectives are as follows. Recall the morphology, life cycle, pathogenesis, epidemiology of different nematodes, and distinguish the diagnostic features of different nematodes. Okay, so when you said nematodes, these are under the phylum Nemahelminthes. Okay. And referred to be the roundworms. No, they are referred to be the roundworms. Take note, guys, that nematodes is cylindrical. Okay, pabilog sila, kaya ang tawag sa kanila is roundworms. No, they are cylindrical and they are non-segmented. Non-segmented, not like your cestodes. No, so cestodes. The next topic that we are going to discuss in the next topic that we are going to discuss. Cestode, you will you will find it there that cestode a nema helminth uh, a nema uh, a helminth rather I'm sorry a helminth which body is segmented. Pagdating kay nematodes natin, in our nematodes they are cylindrical they are rounded but they are non segmented their body is continuous isang katawan lang okay nematodes is also known to be bilaterally symmetrical no. What do we mean by bilaterally or bilateral symmetrical? No? Bilaterally symmetrical means bilaterally symmetrical. Yan. What do we mean by bilaterally symmetrical? When we said bilateral, bilaterally symmetrical, when you divide the worm, no? when you divide the worm into two, whatever organ will be present on the left side Will all be will also be the same organ that will be present on the right side. Or in other words, kung ano yung makikita mo sa kanan, yun din yung makikita mo sa kabila. Usually, our nematodes is covered with cuticle, no? And this cuticle is a, uh, a protective layer, a protective covering made up of chitin. That's why our roundworms are capable to survive in acidic environment in our intestine in our stomach okay there is also what we call a uh, connection between the mouth and the anus of our roundworms because why they have what we call digestive tract okay they have what we call alimentary tract alimentary tract hindi elementary ha alimentary tract which means this is a connection from mouth of our nematodes until to its anus. That's why, remember guys, yung nematodes natin, ano yung sabi ko sa inyo? Nematodes has what we call digestive tract. And that is your alimentary tract. The connection or the tubing you know, that connects the mouth of the uh, nematodes and the anus of the nematodes. Now, ito naman yung maganda doon. Even though that they have here, even though that they have what we call digestive tract, no? It is nice to know that our nematodes has no circulatory system. Walang puso ang mga bulate. Okay? Now, even though they don't have circulatory system, they have the man separate sexes. Okay, and unlike protozoans, nematodes are producing via male and female sex population. Okay, meron sila nun. Meron silang reproductive. Meron silang, uh, what you call this? Uh, sexual reproduction. Okay, that is true with our nematodes. Not all nematodes requires, ito gusto ko mahalaga sa inyo. Why? Because there are nematodes that will require host. Okay? Yan, mahalaga yan, ha? There are nematodes, <coughs> excuse me, there are nematodes that require host. Okay? But most of our nematodes are free-living Ano ibig sabihin nun, sir? It means that they are facultative parasites. They can live even without 
the host. But the presence of host allows them to continue their life cycle, allows them to survive. Because the presence of the host will give them nourishment. The presence of the host will give them food, will give them essential oy, lugaw, essential nutrients for their survival. But most of them are free living. Okay? Ngayon, meron tatlong, tatlong morphological life cycles ang ating nematodes. The adult, the larvae, and the egg. No? Mamaya, pag-usapan natin. Ano yung mga egg, adult, and larvae na yan? To move on, no? medyo mahaba pa itong nalakbay natin, to move on, here are some of the nematodes. Actually, guys, they are 500,000 no? and counting. There are 500,000 nematodes. Take note of my word and counting. Baka meron pa dyan, hindi natin na-detect. But they are nematodes. There are 500,000 nematodes no? across the world. 500,000 species of nematodes. And all of these 500,000 nematodes are considered photogenic, are capable of causing parasitic infections. Parasitic infections to man, parasitic inf infections to animals, and parasitic infections to the plants. Yes, you heard it right. Parasitic infections to plants. However, the purpose of our discussion the purpose of this discussion is limited to parasitic infections to humans. The following parasites that I am going to describe to you in this lecture are all parasitic infections to human. Some of them are actually parasites of animals. Like for example, Toxocara canis, the dog roundworm. That is a parasitic infection to dog. A roundworm of the dog, usually seen in dog, but also capable of causing infections to human. And that what type of infection is that? That is what we call zoonotic infection. Now, no, not to prolong the agony, ano ba yung mga parasites na yan? Masayang aralin ang nematodes. Masayang aralin ang helminths. Kaso lahat sila kasi parasitic. Lahat kasi sila I mean, incapable of causing infections, unlike protozoans. Why? Protozoans, amoebas, Histolytica, Negleria, and Acanthamoebia, sila yung mga pathogenic, the rest are commensals. But here, in nematodes, all of them, meron silang kakayahan to cause infections. To cause infection. Okay? Now, like what I've said, not to, prolong, not to prolong the agony, ang pag-aantay natin, sino ba yung mga nematodes na yan? Take note. These are the nematodes. And opposite to their name is their common name. Meron silang nickname. Dave ka. Okay? Meron silang nickname. In other words, meron silang alias. These nicknames, or these common names, no, I, I call it nickname, but if you, can, you cannot find it into the References. I, I call it nickname. Common name eh. Di ba? Screen name. Sa mga artista. These nicknames no, will also give us an idea of what photogenesis, of what is the reserve of the host, what is the host of that parasite. Ano yung epidemiology ng parasite na ito? Okay? Now, number one. Let's start it with Enterobius vermicularis. Centerobius vermicularis, known to be the pinworm. Ay, bakit pinworm? Because it resembles safety pin. Kaya siya tinawag na pinworm. Okay? Yung adult niya, parang safety pin. It is also known to be the society worm because that is the third most common helminthic infection. No? It is also known as the society worm. What else? 
it is also known as the sitworm. Ay, bakit naman sitworm? Pag ba naupo ka, meron ka na agad parasitic infection of enterobius vermicularis? Hindi. Bakit siya pinawag na sitworm? It is referred to be the sitworm because of its uh, capability to cause pruritus etching in the anal area. Ano kaupo ka? Nasaan ba yung anus kapag nakaupo ka nandun sa may malapit sa upuan? Okay? Now, how about tricuris tricuria? This is what I'm always keep on telling to my students every time that I am introducing tricuris tricuria. Tricuris tricuria is the nematode that dances. Bakit naman sumasayaw? Because of the whip, whip, whip. Okay? Tandaan niya yan. Remember, whip worm. Yung nag whip 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 is a tricuris tricuria. Okay, later, as I show you, as I show to you, how does tricuris tricuria looks like, you will figure it out why I call it the dancing nematode. Ako lang ang nagsasabi nun. Hindi yun yung makikita sa mga references niyan. Okay? It's a way for you to remember that tricuris tricuria is the whip worm. Moving forward, the Ascaris lumbricoides. I know that you heard a lot about Ascaris lumbricoides. PMLS1 pa lang, or even in your biology class, most probably, you heard Ascaris lumbricoides. If you were able to see earthworm, si Ascaris lumbricoides is also like that. Yun nga lang, maputi siya. Pinkish. Okay? Creamy. Ang kulay ni... Ascaris lumbricoides. But the size of Ascaris lumbricoides being referred as the largest intestinal roundworm of the man resembles earthworm. Ganun halos yung kalaki that resides in your body. Okay? The giant intestinal roundworm. At kapag tinawin the giant intestinal roundworm, wala nang iba, wala nang away. Ascaris lumbricoides na yan. Moving forward, we have here your Necator Americanus and Ancelostoma duodenale, both of which are all considered hookworms. Si hookworms, siya ay isang halimbawa ng general term for parasites. Hookworm. Why? May hooklet? Later, pag-usapan natin. Bakit nga hookworm? Okay. Necator Americanus is also known as the New World Hookworm or sometimes it is referred as the American Murderer. Okay. Ancelostoma duodenale, Old World Hookworm. Strongyloides sterkralis, threadworm. Moving forward, we have Trichinella spralis, which is known to be the trichina worm or the muscle worm. Draconculus medinensis is the guinea worm. Papillaria philippinensis is the pudok worm. Parastrongulus cantonensis is the rat lung worm. Anitakis species is the fish and marine mammal roundworms. Toxocara canis is the dog roundworm. And Toxocara cati is a cat roundworm. This is what I am referring a while ago. Okay? These are all zoonotic infections to human. Because these are all parasites of animals. But capable of causing infection to human. That becomes human. Hindi. Parang ano? That becomes human. Naging tao. No. That becomes. That considered human. As accidental host. Okay? Now. Before we proceed. Before we discuss each parasites. Pag-usapan muna natin itong mga key definition of terms. You listen very well, ha? Because this the key definition of terms, these terms, ito yung mga terms na maririnig nyo as we go on. Not only in helminths, but also in different uh, phylum, no, in, in platyhelminthes. Okay? Number one is auto-reinfection. You are being reinfected because of yourself. Ikaw na mismo ang may dahilan kung bakit ka nagkameron ulit ng sakit. Auto means Self. Self reinfection. Reinfecting oneself. Example, enterobius vermicularis. Ha? So enterobius vermicularis is capable of causing auto reinfection. 
mamaya na natin pag-usapan kung bakit. Okay? Our nematodes is also equipped with what we call buccal capsule. This is a long oral cavity. No? Long oral cavity. Ngayon, don't be confused between buccal capsule and buccal cavity because they are just the same. In other words, the buccal cavity, the buccal capsule is the mouth. The start of the alimentary tract. The start of the connection of our digestive tract. Chitin. Chitin is a small a shell made up of thick nitrogen-containing polysaccharide coating. And this is what covers our parasites that make them susceptible, uh, that, that make them resistant, rather. The word is resistant. That made them resistant in the acidic environment in the, intest in the uh, gastrointestinal tract. Would you imagine, no? Ascaris lumbricoides is capable of uh, migration Paano siya nakakapag-migrate? Because meron siya ng chitin. Moving forward, we have here your copods. Copods are freshwater fleas. Copod serves as the intermediate host of our parasite, of, them, of some of our helmets. Okay, like what I've said, ito pong ating mga parasite, meron silang sex life. Si protozoans, wala. Si helminths, meron. Why? Nematodes have different sexes. Meron siyang male, meron siyang female. And copulation is their process of mating of selected worms. Yun nga lang, hindi lahat. Pero usually, they have no? corticated. You will hear it. The corticated, corticated egg. What do we mean by corticated? These are eggs containing mammulated albuminous coating. Okay? Corticated egg of Ascaris lumbricoides. Cuticle, surface covering present into adult nematodes. At yung cuticle na yan, yan yung chitin made up of chitin, a nitrogenous containing compound. I like what I've said a while ago, the corticated eggs of nematodes without uh, uh, X la X, eggs lacking outer mammulated or albuminous coating. Egg, female sex after fertilization. Embryonated, fertilized egg. Okay? Pag naman sinabi natin filariform, these are infective stage the non-feeding stage that occurs after the rhabdiriform larvae completes their second molt. O kagaya ng sinabi ko sa inyo kanina, there are three most, there are three common morphological forms of our parasite, of our helminths. The adult, the egg, and the larvae. Si larvae yung nasa in between of the two. Kumbaga, we have here the egg that will mature into larvae that will mature into adult. Ayan. Egg may vary the size sa parasite. The structure, the appearance, the characteristics of the egg vary among different helminths, among different nematodes. Iba yung egg ni Enterobius sa egg ni Ascaris. Iba yung egg ni Tricuris sa egg ni Capillaria. Iba yung egg ni uh, hookworm sa egg ni Udukworm. The size of their eggs are different from one another. Okay? And remember guys, egg is sometimes referred or usually referred as the juvenile stage. Siya yung baby, siya yung pinakabata egg. And usually egg, nandun pa siya sa loob ng katawan ng parasite. Okay? Now, moving forward, ito na yung larvae. Kumbaga sa buhay ng tao, si larvae yung childhood. 
si larvae yung adolescent period. Okay? Larvae, like what I've said, can be filariform and rhabdidiform. Ano yung difference between filariform and rhabdidiform? O, sabi dito, filariform is the infective stage, the non-feeding stage that occurs after the rhabdidiform larvae. Ano naman po yung si rhabdidiform? Siya yung stage, siya yung first larval stage that occurs after the eggs. So kung, kung i-discuss natin further ang larvae, egg, to be followed by rhabdidiform, to be followed by filariform. And then, saka si adult. Okay? Pagdating kay adult ng ating nematodes, meron siyang male, meron siyang female. Meron siyang separate sexes. These adult worms are equipped again with what we call digestive tract and reproductive system. However, they don't have circulatory system. Hey, ito, larva, juvenile worms. Ito yung batang worm pa lang. Yung juvenile stage, ito yung pinakauna, yung egg. Ibig sabihin ng juvenile worms, nagbabat, tumatanda pa lang, bata pa lang siyang bulate. But even though bata pa lang siyang bulate, kung siya naman ay isang pilar reform, it can initiate already the infection, being said to be the infective stage. Kapag sinabi natin gravid buntis, abay, meron silang sex A, eh di may buntis. Okay? Nematode. Okay, this is a, a multicellular parasites that appears around in cross section. Retroinfection. Now this is an infection or infective pinworm that migrates back into the host body, develop and reproduce rather than becoming the sludge. Okay? Rhabdidiform is the average immature newly hatched hookworm or worm no? characterized by the presence of buccal cavity or buccal capsule. Again, don't be confused because buccal cavity and buccal capsule are just the same. Okay? You also have an embryonated egg which means unfertilized egg. Okay? And then zoonosis, parasites whose normal host is animal. Now, like what I've said, no, yung morphological forms ng ating nematodes, tatlo, egg, larvae, and the adult. Egg is the juvenile stage. Natatandaan ko yung unang beses na nagturo ako ng parasitology sa Lyceum. This is how I said. Egg is the juvenile, juvenile stage. In other words, they are baby. I, I asked, what do we mean by egg? Sabi ng medtech student, baby. What I mean, baby, kasi siya yung unang morphological form. E di sa tao, ang unang morphological form, oh, morphological form ang una nating uh, itsura ay para tayo mga baby. Okay? Larvae, again, is located inside the fertilized egg that emerge and continue to mature. From form 2, Filariform. Okay? Adult worms develop from the maturing larvae from filariform. They have separate sexes, female and male, and equipped with digestive and reproductive system. I still remember one of the questions sa akin. Sa'yo, paano natin malalaman kung babae o lalaki ang bulate? Nice to know. Nice question. And this is the answer. Sabi natin, adult worms have separate sexes. Male, a female, and male. There are two criterions or two criteria that will help us to differentiate female and male nematodes. In terms of tail, 
yung tail ng female is pointed. I'm sorry. Yung tail ng female is pointed. Like this. This is a pointed tail. Para naman natin malalaman kung tail yun. Ito walang buccal cavity, walang buccal capsule, walang mouth, walang opening. Okay. If you still remember the first slide that I showed to you, that is what we call the buccal cavity, a triangular buccal cavity true to Ascaris lumbricoides. Okay. How about for, for male? Ano yung itsura ng tail ng male? Like, uh, slightly coiled. Nakaikot. Okay. Now, in terms of size, female is larger than male. Ayan. These are the two criteria that will help us to differentiate female and male nematodes. Now, classification of nematodes includes pasmid and apasmid. Okay, so what is the difference between pasmid and a fasmid? A fasmid lacks fasmid or caudial receptors. Okay, these are Trichinella sprellis and Capillaria philippinensis. Okay, we also have Trichuris trichuria as a pasmid. Pasmids include hookworm, strongyloides, sterchinellis. Pocheraria bancrofti and Brugia malayi are all these are also nematodes no but at uh, but classified as filaria or or what we call the tissue nematodes the tissue and the blood nematodes at medyo kakaiba si Pocheraria bancrofti at saka si Brugia malayi even though that they are considered nematodes they are flat almost synonymous to cestodes and to trematodes but the photophysiology of Ocereria bancrofti and Brugia malayi seems to be like your nematodes. For morpholo morphology and life cycle, no? uh, like what I've said a while ago, our nematodes are free living. Pwede mo lang host, pero kung yung may host, importante yun sa kanila. Okay? Usually, these helminths are found in soil. All right, and the the way how they initiate infection may vary from one parasite to another. Halimbawa, si Ascaris lumbricoides, pwede siyang vector born, pwede siyang ingestion, no? Vector, paano yung naging vector? Si cockroach, yung itis pwede siyang maging vector, yung flies pwede siyang maging vector, pero yung vector na ito ng Ascaris na si hookworm at saka si uh, flies, wala silang, wala silang halaga. Wala silang importansya sa buhay ng ating parasite. Pwedeng wala sila. Nakakatulong lang sila sa vectoring. Nakakatulong lang sila sa pagtransport ng infected egg. Okay? That's why intestinal nematode infection may initiated in several ways. Oh, ayun, vector born. Si Ascaris lumbricoides, ingestion, kumain ka ng pagkain na contaminated the egg ni Ascaris lumbricoides. Pwede kayo magkakamir on. Transmammary. Si Trongyloides. Inhalation. Si Enterobius. Oh. Pero si Enterobius, pwede rin sa ingestion. Pwede rin siya sa inhalation. Iba't iba ang mode of transmission niya. Okay. And once that the fertilized egg of nematodes, a uh, fertilized female of nematodes lay their eggs in the intestine, they shed in the stool. Yung paglalabas natin ng stool, excuse me, yung excretion of our stool, yung defecation natin, is also our process to fight against parasites. Bakit? Yung mga parasite egg nandun sa stool. We pass the stool. We pass it through defecation. Inilabas natin siya. We excrete this stool that contains the egg. Ito hindi magmamature sa iyo, hindi magdo-develop sa iyo yung parasite. 
But in some cases, wherein there is an heavy parasitic infection, kahit pa i-defecate mo nang i-defecate, mayroong natitira sa'yo. Now, if, if they are being defecated or excreted in the body, they can mature into adult form in two to four weeks. Ayan, ito na nga po. Sinabi ko na ito kanina, free living. Pwedeng wala. Si Enterobius vermicularis nga, ang only known host niya, tao, tayo. Pero wala tayo noon. Saan na? Okay? And since the the habitat of these nematodes are usually uh, sa intestine, a disease tool ang common sample of choice. Pero it is nice to know and it is very clear that the sample of choice may vary from one parasite to another. Unlike kay amoebas, lahat sila except for Negleria, except for Acanthamoeba, and except for Gingivalis, lahat yun stool. Okay? In nematodes, pwedeng stool, pwedeng tissue. Okay? Pero usually nga, kagaya ng sinabi ko sa inyo, si stool, yung most common sample used in parasitology laboratory. Bakit? Most of our parasites are intestinal parasites eh. That's the reason why. Okay, cellophane tape, tape swab. Yung i-impreg mo, impreg, impregnate mo yung cellophane tape dun sa anus or dun sa rectal area ng, ng patient just to adhere the parasites, the egg in the cellophane tape and see it in the, the micro, under the microscope. Okay. Tissue. For example, Trichinella sprellis. The Trichinella sprellis larvae is seen in tissue samples. The larvae of Trichinella sprellis cannot be seen in stool. The larvae is seen in the muscle because it is their habitat. However, the, the egg form can be seen in stool. But the larvae, saan? Sa muscle. That's why it is known to be the muscle worm. Eh. Infective ulcers, let's say for example for Dracunculus medinensis, the guinea worm. Nasaan yun? Nandun sa infective ulcer. Nandun sa sugat. Later in the picture that I'm going to show to you, hinihigit na nga dun eh, yung adult form ng, ng ating parasite. Okay. Remember guys that the recovery of egg and larvae is considered essential. Importante na makakita tayo ng egg at ng larvae. Usually egg is enough. But the recovery of egg and larvae is necessary for the diagnosis of this parasite. Yung larvae, usually kay strongyloides lang yan eh. Okay? But the rest is egg. Adult worm is rarely seen in clinical samples. Okay? Adult worm is, usual, is rarely seen in clinical sample. Mapwera na lang kung yung stool ng pasyente mo na binigay sa iyo ay meron doong souvenir na Ascaris lumbricoides. Serological tests are available for some nematodes. Okay? Now, there are three possible factors that contribute the severity of infection. What are those? Number one, number of worms present, length of time of infection persist, and the overall health of the host. Okay, sa pagdami ng worm, sa pagtaas ng infection, sa pagdami ng parasite na pwedeng maproduce. Could you imagine a single gravid female, Enterobius vermicularis can lay eggs up to 15,000 isang anakan yun. Paano kaya kung ang tao ganun din? Isang anakan, 15,000 ang katumbas. Okay? The length of time of the infection persists. Gano ka-intact yung immune system ng ating host? 
These are the reasons why merong after a while, wala na. Okay? At ito naman yung maganda doon. At interesting. The infection can last as long as 15 years. Bakit? What is the most common clinical picture of a patient with parasitic infection? Usually, helminthic infection. Payat. Malaki yung chan. Malnourished. Okay. Yan. Yun yung criteria. Kaya nalaka yung chan, ang daming bulat eh. Okay. Reinfection and auto-reinfection also plays a role in determining the severity. Bakit ka hindi mawala-wala ang katin ng pangangati ng iyong rectal area? Sa gabi na lang, hindi ka makatulog. Kakakamot. Eh kasi pag kakakamot mo, inaamoy mo yung kamay mo. Auto-infection. Auto-reinfection. Ininhale mo lang eh. Eh tibalik. Ininfect mo pa yung buong pamilya mo. For some, no, parasitic infection to nematodes are asymptomatic. Wala kang nararamdaman. Others will persist symptoms. Abdominal pain, diarrhea. Pero usually, wala. Kaya nga hindi agad makita. Okay? In severe infection, nagkakamaroon ng obstruction sa intestine. Kaya walang feces na nalabas. Obstructed ng parasite. Ay, lalo na sa heavy infection of of Ascaris lumbricoides. Mebendazole is not effective anymore to suppress or to inhibit the activity of Ascaris. Surgical removal na ang kailangan. At doon mo makikita na gagalawan ang parasite sa chan, sa intestine ng tao. Okay? Most of nematodes cause infection or intestinal infection while inside the host. Now, ano yung common, common uh, fi, not common feeling, but common uh, symptoms experienced by patient with helminthic infection, with nematode infection. Abdominal pain, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting fever, and eosinophilia. If you still remember our discussion, ano yung sabi ko sa ina doon? Okay. I have said that eosinophilia is one of the clinical findings, one of the laboratory findings ng mga pasyente na mayroong parasitic infections. Pero hindi lahat ng parasitic infections is capable of causing eosinophilia. Anong ibig sabihin ng eosinophilia? Kapag sinabi natin eosinophilia, mayroong increase in eosinophils, a WBC that is specific for fighting parasitic infections. Pero hindi lahat merong eosinophilia. Because protozoans, not all protozoans, are capable of causing eosinophilia. Most of the parasites that can cause eosinophilia is helminthic infections. Okay? Maluwanag yun. Lalong-lalo na kung ang ating parasite ay tissue invaders. If that is a tissue invader, possibility that there is a high eosinophil count. How are we going to know if there is a high eosinophil count? Through complete blood count. Now, what are the other symptoms? Irritation, blisters. Bakit? Merong skin penetration eh. Muscle involvement may be present. Lalong-lalo na kung merong tang, meron tang, meron kang trichina worm. These are the most common pathogenesis and clinical infections of helminthic infections, of nematodes. And later, as we discuss the different parasites, the different helminths, uh, different nematodes, doon mo maiintindihan sino sa kanila ang mayroong ganun, sino sa kanila yung walang ganun. Sino sa kanila ang kailangan ay cellophane tape swab. Sino sa kanila ang kailangan ay stool. Sino sa kanila ang kailangan ay... Uh, Muscle or tissue biopsy. Okay? So we are going to discuss that per 
parasite. 